diluted. Think about it. Oh, there's so much we could cover on this. Some people simply have too much pride to admit they have been wrong all their life. So, kids are being taught evolution. There's no question about it. Kids are being lied to in these textbooks. There's no question about it. What do we do about it? Well, we cover that in great detail on our public school presentation on uh, the Green series of tapes. Get the public school presentation. We'll tell you step by step what to do, how to get these lies out of your textbook, how you can get on the school textbook selection committee, how you can get your kid exempt from class. Parents, if, you're, if your kids are in a public school, you should send a little note to the teacher saying, I don't want my child taught evolution. It's against my religious convictions. Sign it, notarize it if you'd like, give it to the teacher and to the principal. Then if they continue giving you a hard time, you say, oh, now, excuse me, do you discriminate against people because of their religious convictions? Watch their eyes light up on that one. And if they still give you a hard time, contact me. I got some lawyers waiting in the wings that are anxious to get a lawsuit like that. Title 42, discrimination based on religion. Wow. That principal's going to be the garbage collector the next week. I guarantee you that principal is going to call that teacher in and say, look, let this kid out of class. Stop teaching evolution. I had one guy call me a couple years ago. He said, Brother Hovind, my second grade daughter's teacher just called me. And the teacher said, Mr. Jones, whatever his name was, I forget. He said, your second grader is in my class, your daughter, and she stops me every time I start teaching something about evolution. And the teacher said, I've just decided I'm going to skip this evolution stuff for the rest of the year until your daughter's out of my class. And my first thought was, yay. And then I thought, wait, 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 wait. Why are we sending second graders off to war? This is a battle the parents ought to be fighting, not the kids. We're the salt of the earth. Salt irritates. Hey, if nobody's irritated at you, you're not a good Christian. You don't have to try to irritate them. You try to be salty, that will irritate them. Mm -hmm. Salt preserves from corruption. How come you got so many lies in the textbooks right here in Tennessee in the middle of the Bible Belt? Where's the Christians that are supposed to preserve the world, huh? Why don't some of you get on the school board and do something about this? Why don't some of you get a committee to say, hey, let's take these pages out of the book. This is a lie. It won't cost the school anything. I'll show you. How many of you would volunteer to take the pages out of the book and bring your own scissors? <laughs> won't cost the school a dime. Right, let's, let's do better than that. How many of you would pay $20 for the privilege of being on the committee to cut the pages out of the book and still bring your own scissors? We just had a fundraiser. We just raised a thousand bucks for the school. Wow. Won't cost them a dime. There are many good, sincere, godly public school teachers, and I praise God for them. And they are as frustrated as I am with what's going on. If you've got a good teacher in your school that wants to do what's right, support them. Because I guarantee if there's a teacher that tries to get up and stand up for creation and against evolution, there's a good possibility they'll get fired or get persecuted for it. We cover much more on that on video number seven, how teachers get persecuted for standing up for what's right. Many teach this theory because they simply have never been taught anything else. Many don't know it's okay to teach creation. It's perfectly fine. Well, what do we do? Well, there's a long history of how we got this theory in our schools, and we'll cover all that in the public school presentation. And what do we do about it? It's all covered on videotape number five. We'll show you the dangers of this theory. It's not just a dumb idea. It's a dangerous religion. And then tell you some real practical steps to fix it on seminar part five. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this video series on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. Much more important, though, than knowing all the truth and facts about science is to know the truth about whether you're going to heaven or not. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. 
And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6, 23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. Forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, If you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, He promised He'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian. Thank you so much. Call or write if we can be any help at all. We'd be glad to help. For more information on other materials offered by Creation Science Evangelism, call us at 850-479-DINO. That's 850-479-3466. Or visit us online at www.drdino.com. That's www.drdino.com.